I made this video when I was an undergrad student. I wanted to build a quadcopter from scratch and it was necessary to estimate the orientation, the tilt angles of the quadcopter. It was the first time when I in encountered the common filter and I didn't know how complex matrix equations could solve my problem. Eventually, I used simpler yet unstable uh, method for the uh, attitude estimation. After many years working in numerous projects, nowadays I can appreciate the beauty and importance of the common filter. It played a major role in a polar project when it was necessary to estimate the position of an aircraft. This is uh, Rudolf Kalman who invented the common filter and this is Margaret Hamilton, director of the software engineering division, which implemented this filter inside of the aircraft's computer. These uh, pictures were taken after many years when these uh, both uh, great figures uh, received a national award from President Barack Obama. To help students, hobbyists, and other people who are struggling to understand the common filter as I did before, I decided to make video lessons. These uh, video lessons will help you to build the mathematical background and intuit the mechanism of the common filter. Also, I will show how to implement the common filter in the digital systems. And finally, we will use the common filter for attitude estimation problem. This is the outline of the course. In this video, we will cover random variables and Gaussian distribution to implement one dimensional common filter. Then we will cover a matrices, state space representation, and multivariate random variables to finally understand the linear common filter. Then we will use our knowledge for attitude estimation problem. In addition, I will provide a complementary materials uh, by means of MATLAB, um, Python script, and the technical report. Technical report covers all these uh, topics, but in a, in a written format. And you can find uh, the complementary filters uh, on my Patreon page and on my website. What is the common filter? Different people interpret the common filter in a different way, but for me, it's a data fusion algorithm. The problem is that the sensors uh, convey uh, noise along with the actual value, and we need to use the common filter or other techniques to minimize the, the noise level, the uncertainty level. And the common filter uh, does a great job in that sense. And our first step toward the common filter is to cover probability, random variables, and the Gaussian distribution to quantify the noise, the noise level. Why we need random variables? Uh, in a fully deterministic world, we don't need to use random variables. For example, the temperature is 30 degrees, the exam score you will take is 90 points. However, it is hard to predict the future and in the real scenario, temperature is 30 degrees by 50% chance, and the exam score is between uh, 50 and 100. It means that we need to use random variables to correctly comprehend, to correctly grasp the real world. In mathematical terms, we use um, probability density function Px uh, to define the, the likelihood the, of events and, and samples. Px is always greater than zero and the, the sum of Px is equal to one. And if we have continuous random variables, we need to use integral instead of uh, sum operation. And let's consider some examples. When uh, throwing uh, a coin, which is a classical example, we have two possible cases, heads and tails, and the probabilities are equal to 0.5. Another classical example is rolling dice. We have six um, possible cases and the probabilities are equal to one over six. 
And these examples are part of uh, uniform random uh, distributions we, when we have equal likelihood of events uh, and samples. When using MATLAB, we have rand i function to generate uniformly distributed um, integer random variables. Our first argument is this, this is the range of random variables. The second is the, is the size, the, the, the number of uh, samples we want to generate. So we don't need to manually uh, roll the dice 60,000 times. Instead, we can just uh, run this function. So let's, let's run this code. And also I'm using this uh, function to uh, compute the, the number of occurrences of each cases. And as you see, the number of occurrences uh, is approximately equal to 10,000 because the probabilities are, are equal to one over six and we have uh, 60,000 um, uh, samples. That's why for each uh, case, we get around 10,000 occurrences. And we can um, plot uh, the probability density function. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that when we have discrete random variables, we have probability mass function instead of probability density function. And the, the, when rolling the dice, we have a discrete random variable, meaning that uh, we have finite number of um, events, the finite number of samples. And, and for that example, we will get this um, function. But uh, for a continuous random, uh, uniformly distributed random variable, which has this range between one and 20, we will get this, um, this function this plot for a probability density function. Uh, one of the fundamental uh, concepts in probability is expected mean. And we have this uh, equation to compute the expected mean. So we uh, multiply each value by the corresponding probabilities and we take the sum. And when we have a continuous random variable, we use um, integral instead of sum operation. And for rolling dice example, we can compute the expected mean using this expression. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And for each case, we have the probability one over six. And if we compute this expression, we get 3.5. And the interesting thing is that if we look at the uh, probability mass function of rolling dice example, the center of, of the of the PMF is 3.5. What it means is that expected mean defines the center, the, the, the center of the probability density function or probability mass function. Uh, another related uh, concept is sample mean, which is uh, manually doing the experiments and the, and the taking the average. And the interesting thing is that mean, sample mean, converges to the expected mean as we increase the, the, number, of, um, the number of experiments. For example, uh, let me generate 100 uh, random variables and I compute the sample mean. So if I run this code, we get around 3.32, which is kind of close to 3.5, the expected mean. But as I increase the number of experiments to, to 10,000 and run this code, we get um, something which is really close to the expected mean. But if I generate 100,000 and run this code, we get really, really close to the expected mean. Another important uh, feature of the expected mean uh, operation is that the expected mean of the sum of random variables is equal to the sum of expected means of individual random variables. And when we scale the, the random variables, we can just scale the expected mean. Another important concept is variance, which defines the spread of the random variables. And we have um, this equation to compute the variance. We take every sample, we subtract the expected mean, we take the square and multiply 
by the corresponding probability and we have the sigma square to define the variance and another uh, related uh, concept is standard deviation which is the square root of variance and for rolling the dice example we can compute and the variance using this expression and we will get this value close to 3 and um, and um, similar to sample mean we have a sample variance uh, which is uh, kind of um, similar to the equation of variance but we take the average of this expression and again as we increase the number of uh, experiments the sample variance uh, will converge to the variance and when we have MATLAB we can use uh, this expression to compute um, the, the, the variance, sample variance and when we have just the 100 samples we get this value but if I generate 10,000 random numbers and run this code, we get something really close to the variance. After uh, covering uh, fundamental uh, concepts like variance and mean, let's talk about normal or we call it Gaussian distribution. This is a typical measurement of uh, sensors. Along with the actual value, we have some noise. And as you see, in most of the cases, the, the data samples are close to uh, close to the main trend to, to the actual value but once we are far we have less and less than the samples that's why it is um, better to uh, model this uh, noise using a gaussian distribution not uniform uh, uniform distribution a normal gaussian distribution has this uh, pdf function probability density function and don't be afraid of this uh, complicated equ equation if you if you're encountering it first time because we will never use uh, this equation as we see instead we use n symbol to denote um, normal uh, or gaussian distribution by mean mu and sigma square variance so uh, so uh, so the Gaussian distribution is symmetric. We have mean in the center, and we have this uh, shape as, as, the, as the PDF function. When using MATLAB, we have a RAND and uh, function to generate a Gaussian distribution, uh, random variable with Gaussian distribution with mean zero and variance one. So let me run this part of the code. And if I plot the generated pseudo random variables, we get something like this. So we have mean zero, and we have some uh, spread of the random uh, numbers. Another interesting thing is that if we take this uh, range, mu minus square and mu plus square, we have 68% a population of the of the random variables if we take this uh, range mu minus two two uh, sigma mu plus uh, two sigma we will get 95 percent of of the population so what it means is that in most of the cases the the random variables are concentrated around the mean value but this is really continuous uh, uh, pdf function so in order to show that I wrote this code using for and if statement, I just computed the number of cases when we have a random variable in this range. Also, I computed the number of cases when we have random variables in this range. So then I divide by the total number of cases and multiply by 100. So if I run this code, we get around 68% and 95% as expected. Next, when we do a linear transformation, like a scaling and adding the, some bytes to the uh, random, uh, to the Gaussian distribution, we will get another Gaussian distribution with this uh, mean, like adding the bias and this uh, variance, which is 
uh, multiplying the, the variance by the square of the uh, of the scale. So here I want to generate a random uh, variable um, normal with normal distribution and with this mean and variance. So I add this mean and I uh, multiply the, the output of this function by the square root of the variance. So if I run this code, we get uh, something, we get this um, plot. So the mean is around three and, and we have more variance, more spread of, of the random variables. Uh, next, uh, pay attention to the fact that when we have high quality measurement, or in other words, when we have less noise, the, the data samples will be concentrated around the mean, around the actual value. So what it means that we will get less variance. But it, when we have noisy measurements, the, the, the data samples will be spread, will be more spread around the, around the actual value. So we will get uh, high variance. What it means is that we can uh, model the, the level of noise uh, by modulating the variance of the normal distribution. So when we have normal distribution with low uh, variance, we have high quality sensor. Um, in contrast, when we have uh, random distribution with high variance, we get low quality sensor measurements. So I wanna show this using this piece of code. Um, so we have a sign signal, then we have some uh, additive noise, but with different variances. In the first case, we have 0.1 variance. Here we have variance equal to 10. So if I run this part of the code, uh, this is the actual value. This is the case when we have noise with a 0.1 variance. And this is the case when we have a noise with variance equal to 10. So here it's, it's impossible to to see the main trend. Um, in this case, we have some grasp the, the act about the actual value. So what it means is that if we have less variance, it means that we have higher precision. So the task is to decrease the variance. Based on the assumptions we made, we can model the sensor measurements using this equation. Y is sensor readings. X is the actual value that we want to extract and E is a, is a noise. And we can no, model the noise as, as the Gaussian distribution with a mean zero and some variance. And the variance defines, depends on the quality of the sensor. And, and let's uh, consider a very simple uh, scenario uh, to show how we can leverage this model. Uh, let's uh, consider a case when and uh, xt, uh, the, the value that we want to measure is constant number. What we can do, we can take uh, multiple uh, measurements, numerous measurements, and we can take sample mean. And as the number of experiments increase, uh, the sample mean will converge to the expected mean. And the expected mean of y is equal to the expected mean, mean of x plus expected mean of noise. And we, we know that expected mean of x is, is a constant because x is, is just a uh, constant uh, number. And e, e noise, it has expected mean uh, equal to zero because we model it as a no normal distribution with mean zero. So what it means is that if we take a sufficient num uh, number of samples and average, we find out the actual value. So let me show uh, this using this piece of code. So I generate 100 samples. So the actual value that we want to measure is 30. So the measurement is uh, 30 plus some noise with this variance. So if I run this code, we get some, some we get this uh, measurement. And when we take the, the mean, we, we get something like this, which is really close to 30. But if I generate just the 10 samples and take the average, we get something which is far from the real value. But if I generate, let's say 10,000 samples and take the mean, 
we get something which is really close to the to the actual value that we want to measure and this approach works when the actual value that we want to measure is constant otherwise it is not going to work it is hard to follow uh, when you don't see the end result that's why i decided to present a one-dimensional linear common filter earlier so you will have better understanding why we covering all these topics uh, for that uh, let me present this simple uh, data fusion algorithm imagine that we have two uh, sensors and we can model, model the measurements using these two equations y1 and y2 are the sensor readings uh, xn is the actual um, value let's say temperature value that we want to measure but we also have some noise and and the the the, the level of noise uh, we can model it using a sigma one square and a sigma two square and let's consider three possible scenarios the first scenario is when uh, the precision of sensor one and two is equal for example we have two sensors with, with the same model. In that case, the optimal solution will be uh, the average of y1 and y2. It may, why? Because we trust y1 and y2 in, in the same manner. However, if y1 has higher precision, for example, sensor one is more expensive than, than sensor two, for example. In that case, we have to trust more to Y1 than Y2. In that case, the optimal solution will be closer to the measurement of Y1. The third scenario when a Y2 has higher precision, in that case, the optimal solution, uh, the value of the optimal solution will be closer to Y2. We, we can generalize this approach using uh, this um, linear interpolation, or we call it a weighted average. If a Y1 uh, has greater precision, the optimal solution will be closer to Y1. In contrast, um, the Xn, uh, the, the optimal solution would be closer to Y2. If uh, the precision is equal, we get Y1 plus Y2 divided by two. And I use n uh, symbol to uh, to denote to denote the time frame. So these are uh, equations are adapted to apply them in in digital systems. We can uh, further um, modify this equation uh, based on this uh, k gain. So we de we denote k as uh, sigma one square divided by sigma one square plus sigma two square. And based on k we can rewrite this equation uh, using uh, this expression. And let's compute the variance of xn. For that, we take the variance of this expression plus the variance of this expression. The variance of this, are the first part of the equation is the variance of y, y1, which is sigma 1 squared, multiplied by the square of this uh, scale. So we get this expression and it's the same for, for this part of the equation. And if we sum these two expressions in the end, we will get something like this. Then we substitute k again, and eventually we will get this expression for the optimal solution. And as you see, k is always uh, uh, less than zero, less than one, I'm sorry. In, it means that we will get variance which is less than sigma one square. So what it means is that using the data fusion algorithm, we decrease the variance or we increase the precision. And to show this uh, approach, I wrote this code. So we have um, a temperature, uh, the actual value of the temperature and the sensor one is a temperature plus some, uh, some noise and we have sensor two, which is temperature plus some noise as well. Then I, I do data fusion based on the, based on this equation. And if I run this part of the code, this is the actual value. This is the sensor one. This is the output of the data fusion. And as you see, we have less noise compared to sensor one. And finally, let me present a one dimensional common filter. Uh, for that, let's consider this problem. We have a robot 
that has an encoder that measure, measures the velocity, also it has a GPS uh, tracker that estimates the absolute position of the robot, and the task is to merge the, the sensor, uh, sensor's readings to have better estimation of the position. And we assume that the robot moves only in one axis. And the naive approach is, of course, is taking the integral of the velocity. We take the position from the last iteration, we add velocity times the sample period, and we assume that the velocity, the acceleration is zero. And we can model this approach using uh, this equation. So E is the, is the noise of the encoder. And if we uh, compute uh, the variance, we have the, the variance from the last iteration plus the variance of the encoder. What this equation means is that the variance gets accumulated. For example, after a thousand iterations, the, the variance of the uh, predicted position will be a thousand times the encoder uh, variance. So the, the measurement will be uh, really uh, noisy. And using this uh, code, I modeled this approach when we use just an encoder. So we have the velocity, actual velocity, and the encoder velocity is velocity plus some noise. And if I run this code, we will get something like this. This is the actual uh, value, the actual position. This is the position me measured by, by the encoder. So in at the beginning, we have kind of a good um, estimation, but once we go further, we have uh, less and less precision. And look at the, uh, the variance of the encoder, which is really small value. So what it means that even if we have really high precision encoder, uh, encoder measurements, eventually the estimated position will, will drift. And the solution is of course using a GPS uh, readings and we can model it using this equation. We have the actual position and the measurement of a GPS, which is the actual plus some noise. And so it means that we have two sources of information, this measurement of the GPS and the predicted uh, measurement, predicted position uh, based on the encoder readings. So we can merge these two sources of information using the data fusion algorithm that I presented. So we have the predicted plus a K, this gain multiplied by measured minus predicted. And this equation is based on this equation. And uh, we have to compute the, the variance of, the, of this estimation because we will use this um, variance in the next iteration uh, to be specific in this equation. And again, I modeled this approach using this piece of code. So this is the actual value. This is the measurement uh, GIP, uh, of, of the GPS. And this is the, um, the, the output of the data fusion. So as you see, even if we have really noisy GPS measurement, uh, merging the, the, the the readings of the GPS and the encoder uh, provides a really high precision estimation of the position. So this is a one-dimensional uh, linear common filter. Next, we have to cover uh, additional topics to generalize this approach to n dimension. And please uh, don't forget to subscribe and you can find all these uh, MATLAB scripts and the technical reports uh, on my Patreon page and on my website. So see you soon.